In this video, I'm going to talk about simulation modeling. Here are the main components that we need to have in simulation model. So first of all is the actual model. And the model is an abstraction of the real problem that includes the interaction of different forces and translate their interaction into an output. It's going to be an equation or some form of mathematical representation of those interactions. Is going to include the uncertain inputs. So the uncertain input is anything that the manager or the decision maker cannot control. He cannot predict with certainty for the future. So it might be the actual demand. It might be the cost of raw materials. It might be the rate of return, the interest rates. Anything that has an impact on the output, but he cannot really control it. He can estimate with a distribution. So he can take or he can learn from past experience what is sort of the distribution, what are the values that he might take that input, but he doesn't know with certainty which one is the one that he's going to take. Then there are decisions. So decisions that are really under the control of the decision maker. So here are inputs that he can decide. No, so he can decide if it is a production plan decision, okay, how much to produce, or if he has to decide how much to have in stock, yes, he had control about that, or what stocks and what bonds to include in a portfolio, he has control of that. All those inputs, you know, are captured, the interaction between them are captured in the model, and then the model gives us in return, sort of like the dependent variable, the output which might be the total profit, the total return, the total revenue, whatever the, the interest is for us in that model. What is the, the thing that we're trying to understand? And I'm going to be using here in this video just a regular Excel to analyze the problem. The problem that we're going to be looking at is manager's problem where they have to decide on the order quantity for a particular product. So let's read the example. So it says, a store manager needs to place his weekly order for dairy products, among them crates of one gallon whole milk. A crate contains four gallons. A gallon of milk sells for $3.60 and the cost is $2.90. Very small margin right there. Any unsold milk that they, they have at the end of the week can be sent back for 50 cents. She knows from past experience that weekly demand is approximately normal with mean 600 gallons and a standard deviation. So the question for us or the decision that she needs to make is how many crates should she order for the upcoming week? Okay, so we have here some information about different components. So we have the cost per, per gallon. We have the pri selling price for per gallon. We have also that they come in crates of four gallons. So with all that information, we need to figure out a way to put it together in a model and come up with a recommendation. As I said, I'm going to be using built-in Excel tools so to generate the demand, so in my model, the uncertain input is demand, the demand quantity. You know, so we're going to be using RAND, is an Excel function to generate random numbers between zero and one. So we're going to use that to generate probabilities. Probabilities go from zero and one, so that works really well. And then we're going to use inverse probability functions like the norm inverse, beta inverse, binomial inverse, F inverse, so to compute the actual value. No? So given a probability that we're going to randomly generate, we're going to translate that probability into an actual value for our distribution. In our case, it's going to be the normal distribution that has mean of 600 and a standard deviation of 8. And here are some examples about how do we use those functions. And then after I'm done with all my simulations to summarize the results, I'm going to be using functions such as average, a standard deviation that S, because what I have is a sample, 
and then count if if I'm trying to count how many of my results meet a certain criteria. All right, so now I'm going to move to Excel. Here I have my Excel model where first I enter all the input information that I was given. So I have price, cost, refund. Those are the certain inputs that were provided in the description of the problem. Then I have the uncertain input and I have the mean and the standard deviation for demand. And then I have my decision variables. You know, so I have, I'm going to start uh, assuming that she's going to be ordering 150 crates, which equates to 600 gallons. So that is actually the stock. Right? So to get that, I simply multiply 150 times 4, and it gives me the 600. Now I'm ready to build the model, and the model is going to capture the interaction between all those inputs, and my final output is the profit. That's the main thing I'm interested in. I want to know what is going to be the profit if she decides to order 150 crates per week. So here on the right, I have some of the equations I'm going to be using. So first of all, I'm going to calculate the total cost of the cost of ordering, which is equal to the variable cost that was given per gallon times the order quantity. The order quantity is for number of crates. So I multiply that times four and gives me the total cost of ordering whatever order quantity she decides. Then I have the number of units sold. No, and it's tempting to think that the number of units sold is going to be equal to demand. But that's not really true because if demand is greater than the number of units that she has in stock, then She's not going to be able to satisfy demand. There's going to be some unmet demand and the unit sold is going to be capped by the actual stock. So unit sold is actually the minimum between demand, whatever that demand is, and the stock quantity. Next, given that I have the unit sold, I can calculate the revenue. And the revenue is going to be just the unit sold times the price. The other quantity or the other source of revenue that she has is a refund. So if she stock more than what demand is, she gets a refund for those unsold units. So to do that calculation, well, we have a stock minus demand. No, and this, if demand is less than the stock, this is going to be a positive number. It's not, it's going to be negative. So we have to make sure that we only consider this quantity when it's positive. So I use that max function. So max and stock minus demand and zero and the maximum of the two multiply times the unit refund is going to give me the total refund. And then lastly, I have the profit. So now that I have all those Calculations done, I can calculate the profit saying that, well, it's going to be equal to the revenue plus the refund minus the cost. Okay. So those are the model equations that I'm going to use here in Excel to do the calculations. I, I listed them here on the bottom. And I'm, for now, I'm going to skip demand by unit sold. If I double click here, it just has that mean function. Uh, if I click for revenue, it does the calculation, uh, multiplying the unit sold times the price, the cost times the order, the refund, the refund, okay, I have it there, and the profit. So right there, what I've done is I enter in Excel those equations using the references to where those inputs are in my model. Now, the other thing that I need to do is generate random demand. And here I already have some random demand. So I have there a demand of 654. If I click anything in my spreadsheet, it's going to calculate a different value. So demand is uncertain and it changes. And the variation is following this normal distribution with mean 600 and standard deviation 80. I am using the function that I mentioned in earlier. I'm using the 
run the number generator to generate a probability, and then I'm using the norm inverse function to generate an actual demand value, okay? I'm also putting that function within this other function in Excel called round, and the purpose is to actually round my demand to a discrete value because I'm talking about gallons of milk and I cannot have a fractional demand. So for that reason, I just round those values. All right, so right there what I have is a model that randomly generates demands and it gives me what is the profit for each of them. I need to generate this or I need to repeat this profit process multiple times. Ideally, a large number of times. I'm just going to do it for a thousand times. So to do that, I'm going to copy my model a thousand times down. So first of all, I'll say, okay, this is trial one. I'm looking for the fill function. This is a series. This is a column one to 1,000. So that's the stop value, 1,000. Hit OK. And what I just did is I asked Excel to continue this series. So it goes one all the way to 1,000. I can go down and look and make sure that I have numbers up to 1,000 and that's correct. Now what I'm going to do is just highlight that and double click so it populates my whole table. So right there what I have is 1,000 weeks of data. You know, so it, I simulated demand for 1,000 weeks and I, for each of them I calculated the unit, uh, number of units sold, the revenue, the cost, the refund and the profit. You can see here the cost is always the same because I'm always in my simulation, I'm always ordering the same quantity. But I can see that my profit varies and it changes. Some weeks is high, some weeks is low, some weeks is even negative. Here I have a negative value. If I want to explore my data, I can highlight something like my demand and ask Excel, or if you want to use stat tools, you can use stat tools. You can ask Excel to give you a histogram of my demand. I'm going to move it to another sheet over here. So this is a histogram of the simulated demand. Simulated demand. And right there, I can see that is approximately normal. Oh, I use the normal distribution to generate my demands and I can verify that. The mean should be 600, and I can see that the peg, you no, know, the center is around 600, so that's a good sign. And I'm sure that if I calculate the standard deviation for my data, it's going to be approximately 80. Okay. I can do the same thing for the profits and see how they look like. So now we are moving on to exploring and analyzing the results. So if I go to profit, I insert a histogram. I'm going to move it also to its own sheet. So I have here. Histogram of simulated profit. And what I can see here that is that my profit is not following a normal distribution. Not at all. Actually, it's very um, left skewed. I have a majority of my data here on the right, and then I have some values that go to the left. So we might be wondering what happened. Why is that my input, my uncertain input is approximately normal, but my output is not? And the reason is because there are some interactions in my model that are limiting the profit that I can get. You know, so what this is doing is, well, I cannot, when demand is greater than the 600, when demand is greater than my stock, I'm not being able to capture that revenue. So for that reason, this my profit is capped 
by my decision, the quantity that I have in stock. We can calculate for this data now. We can, I'm going to move this out of the way and we can calculate also, if we're interested, some statistics for my, my data, such as I can calculate the average profit and the average standard deviation, not the average standard deviation, the standard deviation of profit or maybe the probability of getting a profit that is less than zero, meaning the negative profit. So for, for this, we're going to use the average. I'm highlighting my data. The average function just gives me there what is the average profit. If I calculate the standard deviation, this is a sample, so I need to keep that in mind. Highlight my data and I get that the standard deviation is around 130. Now for the probability, I'm going to be using the count f function. So I'll say count f my profit. So I highlight my profit less than zero. Okay, make sure we enter the right information. I Okay, yeah, it's telling me that out of the 1,041 have a profit of less than zero. I'm going to divide that by 1,000 so that way I have the probability and I'm going to make sure that it knows that this is not a dollar amount. It's probably, so this is saying there is roughly a 5% chance that I'm going to have a negative profit given the input, given that those are the prices and the costs and the refunds, the, the demand is uncertain, and I decide to order 150 credits. All right, so now as a decision maker, I can look at that and make a decision or understand what are the risks of that decision that I make.